So, yeah, this is the sort of um, always a kind of graveyard slot in the uh, IL agenda, which gets moved around at the whims of the uh, other speakers, plus it expands and contracts to fill the time available, uh, depending on whether we're running late on the agenda. So, uh, but I think obviously in this audience, um, yeah, you, you can, I think you're pretty familiar with the IETF, so I'm not going to go through all the slides and we're running behind a bit of time. I just have to spin this out long enough for the next speaker to uh, send their slides, so uh, bear with me if I'm telling you stuff you already know. Um, okay, so well, one of the reasons we do this is actually because, as you're probably aware, the Internet Society is um, the organisational home of the IETF. Um, we provide some organisational support and some financial support. Um, and you know, one of the, the, the missions, as Megan was saying at the very beginning of this workshop of, of the Deploy360 program is actually to be that bridge between the IETF standards making process and natural deployment. So we, we always talk a little bit about you know, what the IETF is and some of the, the, the groups that we sort of focus on and, and, uh, and, and maybe support to some extent. So I'm not talking on behalf of the IETF because as you know, nobody really speaks for the ITF, so I'm just talking about the ITF as an individual participant, as we all do. Um, yeah, and of course the mission of the ITF, it's the, um, to make the internet work better by producing the technical documentation, um, but also you know, provide some um, uh, input and guidance as to how the, the internet gets designed and managed. Um, so yeah, this has been running since um, you know 1986, and it's this large um, open community of engineers and operators and vendors, researchers um, who work in the development, to work on development matters. Um, primarily volunteers who um, participate on an individual basis um, to develop the protocols. Um, although there are many cases, they are actually supported by their uh, employers. But the aim is to. Um, to produce the open standards, for an open standards process, which uh, these come out at the end as um, requests for comments. Obviously, these standards make the internet work, and I actually would point out many of these are also ex have been experimental standards, so it may have escaped people's attention. Um, but quite recently, IPv6 was only just recently made a formal standard of the IETF. Up, up to that point, it was an, only an experimental standard. So some cases are not actually formal standards that, that, uh, that are well-known protocols, but um, these are obviously some of the more common ones. Um, and some of the newer ones are things like Dane, for example, and DNSSEC. Um, well, actually, DNSSEC's not that new. It's, it's probably getting on for 20 years old now, but um, it feels new. Um, Okay, so um, the, the point is, is that anyone can participate in, in the IETF um, uh, process. Um, you can do this through the mailing list, you can follow online on the website through webinars, um, uh, all the meetings are, are, are streamed. Um, and it's also possible to submit ideas and potential uh, standards through uh, internet drafts, also known as IDs. Um, these get discussed in the working groups, um, and uh, if there is sufficient consensus, these will progress through the standards process, perhaps ultimately to become uh, an RFC. Many do not, but uh, that's ultimately how um, the standards get produced. So, obviously, there's different working groups, um, depending, some of them are focusing on very specific areas, some are focusing on much broader areas, some have been going for a very long time, some have a very short lifetime, they're, they're to do specific pieces of work and wound up. Um, but there are um, about, well, we last count, 134, um, and that was actually uh, verified by um, Fred Baker the other day, um, he counted 134 as well, so it's good that there's two people counting and getting the same number. Um, but yeah, they, they, they usually have two or three chairs, each that share, co-chairs that, that share the work. Um, and there is a, usually a, a specific purpose and a charter and a focus, specific deliverables and a defined time frame most of the time. But, but as I mentioned, there are some working groups that are uh, very long running. Um, but these themselves are interorganised into seven different areas, um, which are led by an area director, and they are quite important in 
determining which um, uh, drafts may make it to uh, standards, uh, to an RFC standard. So those are the seven areas um, covering a whole sort of variety of, of uh, things, applications, routing, the internet, uh, so things like IPv4 and IPv6, DNS fall under the internet area. Um, TLS, where would that fit? That would probably fit under applications, I guess. Um, seven areas. And there's sort of a quite interesting distribution between the number of working groups in each area. The applications is quite clearly the, uh, the area with the most work, and I would say probably the, 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 um, uh, the area where there's most sort of uh, groups appear and disappear. Um, in the, in the IETF process, but um, then of course there's just there's the one, only the one in the general um, area, just the IETF uh, group. Uh, so yeah, this, these are held three times a year. Um, they move around uh, the world to different locations, um, but I'm going to come to the point actually about Africa. Uh, there's an important point to make about this. So actually, there, the last, last ITF, so this was attended by about 1,200 participants from around 50 countries. Um, this was held in July. Um, but I think the sort of, well, so 1,200 participants, that's maybe average, maybe even slightly below average. Um, maybe the ones in the US get, get slightly more. Um, but of course, as well as the on-site participants, there's a number of uh, remote participants too. Um, but I think the important um, uh, point to make is there were actually only six that we could count from South Africa. Uh, so out of 1,200, only six from South Africa. Um, there's other events happening, um, the hackathon and the code sprint, um, that, that's held um, a couple of, uh, usually at the weekend before the IETF, where it brings together people to um, sit together and discuss and collaborate and, and actually code, write some code and check, test their code together. Um, so really to develop some practical implementations of the uh, IATF standards. Um, but one thing that we do at ISOC is we actually write these rough guides, um, which we write in advance of the, um, uh, the IATF. So what we're trying to do is highlight what's the latest work that's happening, you know, what are the, the, the interesting things so we are quite often, often focusing on IoT at the moment. That's one of our areas of interest. Um, but we'll also highlight the areas that, that we focus on at Deploy360, so IPv6, um, TLS, DNSX. So anything that's sort of happening um, in these areas, um, we will tend to highlight. Actually, one area that is quite uh, new for us is um, uh, Deprive, so DNS over TLS or DTLS as well. Uh, and in fact, Jan has been working on that in the Go6 lab. That's his latest project. Um, this has been actually, there was a test implementation run at the last IETF of, um, of uh, DNS over TLS. So this is actually encryption between, encryption of the um, queries and responses of the DNS uh, uh, traffic. So the idea is to um, um, deter surveillance of, of, of this traffic. Um, so actually, only yesterday, I think, we, we posted a blog, Jan's experiments in the um, Go6 lab. So go to the Deploy360 website, you can read all about the trials and tribulations he had getting it to work, the experimental version. So the next meeting is in um, Singapore in November, um, coming up quite quickly. Um, and this will actually be the 100th ITF. Um, and as always, there's remote participation for audio streams, web conferencing, and there's a Jabba chat rooms as well. So we encourage you to participate. Okay, so we move on to the actual some substance now. Um, there's an interesting challenge for Africa regarding the ITF. So there has never been an ITF meeting in Africa um, for various reasons. Um, one is that the awareness in the region is, is quite low. Um, there's low attendance from uh, Africa in general. So there were only six participants from South Africa. But actually, if you look up for the whole continent, it's really, really quite a low number uh, of the total percentage. Um, 
And actually, out of more than 8,000 RFCs, um, we think there's probably only about 20 have been author authored by Africans. I, it's a little bit of a loose definition because it's hard sometimes. There may be some um, um, uh, African people may have authored them by whilst they're living in America or in another country. So it's quite hard to actually determine this, but it's certainly quite a low percentage, um, I think it would be fair to say. And then there's sort of relatively limited research about the internet in universities as well. So um, one of the things that ISOC has been working on is the um, ITF Africa initiative. And actually, this is an initiative of my colleague, Kevin Chegi, who's uh, sitting there at the front, and Michuki as well. Um, so they're the people to talk to about this. So credit to them. Um, I'm just presenting their, their work. Um, yeah, and so the aim is really to increase the IETF's visibility in Africa and to promote the, the use of um, open standards here. Um, but more specifically, build up a community of individuals who can um, contribute to the um, IETF uh, process. So uh, there is a mailing list. There's about 200 participants on that. That's the, um, the place to, uh, to go to subscribe. But actually, practically, more practically, what's been done, um, we've set up um, uh, viewing hubs for ITF 99, or we set up viewing hubs for ITF 99. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to be doing this for the next one. I'm guessing we probably are, but I guess Kevin will know. Um, so there were eight hubs based in seven countries. And there was also an ITF hackathon um, that was held in Nairobi in, back in May. Um, there's some information there on that URL. Um, there were also uh, meetings of the ITF, uh, African participants at the last two ITFs, um, 40 participants there. Um, but just more generally, there's uh, some work ongoing to develop some mater ITF materials that can be used in um, university um, uh, curricula. Um, and that's actually, some of that is available on the Hackathon um, website. And then there's two uh, webinars coming up, um, one on vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. This is one of the latest ITF developments, um, plus also the um, identity-enabled networks. Um, and I'd just like to mention the two fellowship programs that we have. So we, uh, we have some funding available for people to attend uh, ITF meetings. Um, so you can apply and make your case and say, this is the reason I'd like to attend the ITF. Um, this is a really, really horrible URL. And I was hoping with a new website, um, this would actually be better. But it seems it's the same. But uh, these slides will be online, so you can cut and paste to uh, follow that. And then we also have um, an ITF policy program as well. So this is these are. Um, uh, fellowships are available for regulators to attend ITF meetings. So the idea is, is to sort of raise awareness and uh, improve knowledge of actually how the ITF standards making process works. Um, and they have a specific program at the ITF which they can attend. They can, come, can talk to the, uh, some of the working group chairs and understand how this, uh, uh, this process uh, works. Um, again, pretty horrible URL, but it's uh, yeah, cut and paste from the slides. Okay, so I'm told now the next presenter is ready, so I will uh, skip over these slides. Um, so this is the last one. Um, yep, the, the ITF is, is an important, has plays an important role in the, uh, the functioning of the internet, um, and it's an open and inclusive um, structure. So we do very much want to encourage um, participation, particularly from Africa. Um, in this, um, in, in this uh, organisation. Okay, so that's it. Um, oh, any questions? No, oh, there we go. I have a quick question, and it's probably a very simple question with very complex answers. <laughs> How do we fix the IETF? What do I mean by that? <laughs> Earlier this year, I was writing our own TACAX server. And I went looking for TACAX RFCs. First TACAX RFC I found back in 1994. 
I, the latest TACX RFC, mm. then expired in February 2017, and I see there's now another one that expires sometime in 2018 and was on the 21st of April, and nothing's changed. And I'm seeing protocols that are being used globally by a lot of people, but they're stuck in this mire that is the IETF and not moving. And if you want to know why people like myself and others aren't involving ourselves in the IETF, that's case in point because when you are seeing something being dragged on for 20 plus years while people are using it, people are advancing beyond it. This is a problem. How do we fix that? How do we make the IETF actually run more smoothly and faster and yeah? A small correction, it's not an RFC, it's an internet draft that is okay, 20 it, years yeah, old. Okay, it's a draft <laughs> that everybody's actually using. That is the problem. You're setting yourself up. You have to fix it. The ITF is, we all have to work hard at going to ITF. That's what he's telling you. You're setting yourself up, Andrew. We could, I, I, as you well know, Andrew, we could have this discussion all day long and we would never come to the right, we'd never come to the conclusion, but... I will say this, that I think there is a recognition um, in various circles at the ITF and also uh, at ISOC that this is, there is, you know, what you're saying is, is an issue and there are some concerns about it or a lot of concerns about this and I think that, you know, it's fair to say, I, 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 can't, I, I can't stand here and make promises about this, but I think there is some recognition of the problem and there may be some steps will get taken to address this. But, you know, it's, it's a very big issue. It's a wider issue than we can, can resolve or debate in this, in this forum. Um, I think the point is well made. I think the point is well understood. Um, Yeah, no, point well made.